Hi, it's Graham Wilson here. I just realized it's Friday afternoon, just about to wrap up and I've just been ringing our team and doing some checkouts a week and it's really interesting asking them about, you know, what are you gonna do at the weekend? And I guess at the moment, we're still in lockdown at the moment, it's a bit like every day sort of merges into another. I can't believe how quick this week has gone. Uh, we're so busy and, and doing some amazing stuff with our clients and lots of support. And I think it's really interesting the fact that it's starting to change now. I think I've noticed it's gone very quiet um, out there. A lot less emails, um, a lot less conversation with people, uh, less on social media. And I think people are in a, starting to get that realization now. Sometimes when change happens, a lot of people, you know, the game changes, they get really excited, don't they? And they, they really go out there and start to, to really do things differently. And uh, they're very visible. And, and eventually, I think. Um, I'm seeing that actually now starting to die down a little bit. And I've been asked a lot this week around a lot of people who are concerned around themselves and their, their personal responsibilities and, and their resiliency. And it was uh, interesting that, you know, a few, uh, a few months ago, um, actually no, it was a bit longer now, probably about six months ago, I sat down with my, my daughter, Jenny, and we talked about writing this book around resiliency. And, you know, and I guess you know, I'm seeing a lot of that out at the moment. A lot of people talking about resiliency and it's something that we've been taught, teaching for a long time now, and it's something that's close to my heart, something that I've used. And you know, there's a personal story with Jenny and her life as well, how she survived and uh, how she's uh, creating a life for herself. And, and we're gonna share that uh, with people. And I've uh, refined really what I think the key elements are of resiliency. I've talked about a lot. There's lots of videos out there and articles that I've written around resiliency. And it's something that we teach a lot in our programs. And we uh, started to think about what, what could we call a book? And, with um, you know, the thinking today with a lot of people I've been speaking to have been a lot about resiliency and what they can do and ideas and thoughts around you know, how they can pick themselves up and how they can keep themselves like, motivated. And you know, it's just been announced, hasn't it? We've got another three weeks in lockdown. So we're uh, right up to, to May now and you know, possibly still into May and into June. So who knows? And you know, people are starting to get a little bit uh, tired now of, of you know, the the change and, and the fact of the uncertainty and the unpredictability about what's going to happen. So a lot of people are, are starting to struggle with that. And so I was thinking about the work we've done with Jenny and the, and the book we're writing and we came up with a, a, a concept a while ago and we have a, a number of clients who are Japanese and based on Japanese culture as well. And there's a fantastic phrase called wabusabi. I'm not sure whether I pronounced it right, but it's a way of living that focusing on finding beauty within perfections of life and accepting it peacefully and the, you know, the natural cycle that we have of growth and decay and, and just taking things as normal and that's normal a bit like nature your know, nature's always there and it's just normal and, and I think that that concept of a way of living and accepting uh, beauty uh, and imperfections I think that's fantastic to to see that and to be able to do that so that's wabasabi and the second concept I've come across uh, in Japanese culture is the uh, the art of kintsugi, which is all about the, the art of precious scars, which is around this concept of you know, when, when things are broken, for example, like a, a vase or a piece of pottery breaks, they have a belief that they can remake that and the art is to remake it using gold to make it more beautiful. So it's about taking something that's broken, repairing it and making it more beautiful. So those two concepts are fantastic when you link them to resiliency. So we're gonna combine those two concepts and call our book Wabi Sugi. So Wabi from Wabi Zabi and Sugi from Kintsugi. And, and it is the art of resilience for everyday warriors. And I've been sharing a lot of advice around that this week. And I want to just very quickly on this video share with you the, the six things that I've been talking about. The importance at the moment of having a, a vision and a purpose. And okay, there's lots of lots of change happening, but the key thing that stays the same really is around your values, your vision, your purpose, your manifesto. And it's, it's really important to, to really remind yourselves about what they are and even write them down and, and really focus on you know, what is it that we want to achieve? What's our life purpose? You know, our vision may be changing and, and evolving, which it always does anyway, regardless of the situation, it will evolve. Certainly my vision has changed over the years. And um, I think it's really important to, to really hone in down to your your why and, and your your how. The what might change, so, so your purpose, uh, your, your reason for being is gonna be the same. So my purpose around awakening the possibility and leaders to deliver excellent results will always stay the same. And you know, that what I do is changing. So the fact that I'm now doing more virtual work, I'm doing more work on the camera now and videos and helping people from uh, home and 
you know, the, the workshops has gone. You know, that's not happening for a while now, so I'm sure they'll come back. But so what I'm doing is changing. And um, but the, the how really is is really the same. You know, the the concept of you know living my values, being bold, being courageous, keeping things simple, you know, operating with pace is, is still the same. So the whole purpose and values are, are the same. So it's really important to remind yourself, perhaps over the weekend to have a little think about you know, what is your vision, what's your purpose, what are your values and and make sure they're all aligned and make sure that they're going in the right direction. So that will really help you with being resilient and, and get some focus around, okay, so I can't control everything. I can't control the what, but I can control my purpose and my values and make sure that I'm living those every single day. The second pillar of resiliency really is around your energy and your vitality. And you know, there's a lot written around that. And I've been loving the Joe Wicks uh, exercises in the morning, I don't know about you, but uh, he's great and a great, great character. And, that whole concept of you know, movement and keeping yourself energized, eating well, making sure you eat the right diet for you particularly, uh, making sure that you get some really great sleep and some good rest and some proper proper sleep, some deep sleep and recovery sleep. Uh, and, and make sure that you're you're building in mindfulness. There's a lot of people out there at the moment who are still, the people are still working, uh, doing back-to-back -back conference calls, you know, virtual meetings. And it's just not effective to keep doing that all the time. So build in some mindfulness, you know, get out into nature, get out and actually think about you know, stuff and what's happening and your feelings and connect with uh, your intuition and just get out there and have some, some time for yourself and, and meditate and just really think about what's coming up for you and, and really take in what's going on and, and get their mind to rest a little bit and start to focus on, on you uh, rather than the whole concept of leadership about giving all the time. So that's the second thing about vitality. You know, make sure they're all balanced. You know, your diet, the, the the sort of nutrition, the the water, the fluids, the refueling, the movement, the exercise, the mindfulness, and making sure all those sort of things are, are balanced in order to to give you your your energy. And a little tip I learned many years ago was to manage your energy rather than just your time. So think about when is best for you. I love working early in the mornings. I think works well for me. I get a lot, lot done in the morning, so that's why I'm very productive in the morning and get stuff done. And then in the afternoon, I'm doing more reflective and and more sort of um, repetitive jobs that need to be done. Uh, and then obviously in the evenings, I I can then spend some time with the family and, and relax and recover and, and get into recovery mode. So your vitality is really, really important. Yeah, I think in the past we just got away with it and, and managed it and we're okay. But now it's really important. Yeah, keep that movement going, keep that exercise going, you know, keep the body moving all that sort of energy stuff. And often I, I you know, a lot of people see exercise as, as taking energy away, but actually it just re-energizes the body. And you start moving, it's a bit like, yeah, I don't know if you were back in the day when we used to have to drive. I don't know if you've ever been driving down a motorway uh, and you get to the point where you just, your eyes are going, you think I need to pull off, I need to I need to go to services. And, and that's normal, isn't it? Where uh, there's the sign that says uh, motorway services, 20 miles or whatever. And you're having this moment, you think, oh, I, need to, I need to open the windows, get the music on and things like that. But, it's interesting, isn't it, when you pull into the car park after having that near-death experience on the motorway, is the minute you get out of the car, you suddenly come by alive and you're awake again. So the whole aspect of movement is really, really important. So we've got vision, we've got vitality. Next one really is about your support network. You know, what's a support network around you? What's your peer group? Uh, what's your leadership team that's supporting you? Uh, your family, uh, the groups, your, your networks. It's really important to, to make sure that you're connecting with those and you're spending time with them and making sure that you feel supported, but also you, that you're supporting and caring for others as well. So support is a really big one. Uh, composure, you know, make sure you're checking in with your feelings, um, what's happening inside the body in, in terms of the gut, your heart and, and your mind. Make sure you're tuning into those and make sure you're, you're making that choice. Remember that point of choice around stimulus and response. Yeah, the stimulus is given to me. You know, how I choose to respond to that stimulus is, is my response and my choice. I call it your point of choice. So make sure you're choosing the right things. There's a great concept uh, moving from red to blue. So make sure you're in the blue, which is the calm, collective, and, and you're choosing a, 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 an effective response to the situation you're actually in. Make sure that's key to, to your thinking. And uh, the next thing really is about being persistent. You know, we, we need to be persistent, we need to keep going. And I suppose persistence really is a combination of all those things that I've talked about so far, but making sure that we are focused, we are alignment, we are consistent, you know, we are going. And, and we're starting to get into these habits and routines. And yeah, I, I think habits and routines and ways of working will really help you to be more persistent in what you do. It takes away that whole 
that whole ram, you know, ramifications of, of you know, what do I wear, what do I do? Uh, you just into that habit of working and, and it works really well for you. And the final thing, of course, is around decision making and, and making sure that you are making decisions effectively. You're using the right tools and techniques to think about things, to be able to slow down, to reflect, to think about what's going on, get into the root causes of things, making sure you're making you know, informed decisions, not just from, from the intellectual aspect, from the mind, but also from your, your heart and your intuition and the gut and, and what that's telling you in terms of what you should be doing and making sure you're not making rash decisions and rushing into things. And if you think about those six things you know, in terms of resiliency, I'm sure they will help you. And have a think about this weekend and think about, you know, what is my vision? What is my purpose? You know, what are my values? Am I aligned to those? You know, am I actually doing things that are going to recharge me and, and keep my vitality and energy going? You know, have I got the right support networks in place? Uh, am, am I actually making the right decisions? Am I being persistent? Yeah, and, and I, am I really sort of keeping composure or am I allowing my emotions to take over and, and actually responding in you know, an emotional way rather than a, a clear and well thought through way? So I hope you found that useful. Uh, it's a weekend here in the UK, so I'm off to relax now in the garden and just chill out for a little bit, just reflect and be grateful for what we have, not what we haven't got, and, and spend some really great time with the family you know, make some contact with my parents and, and the family that are out there and, and make sure that we are feeling supported, cared and loved for. So I'll see you well and I'm looking forward to sharing more ideas next week. I'll be out uh, next week doing some uh, ideas and thoughts and sharing more videos around leadership. I'm going to be recording quite a few videos next week around uh, resiliency, influencing, negotiation, advanced communication skills. So I'm sure I'll be sharing some snippets of those for you. So I wish you a fantastic weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. Bye for now.